One night driving home from work after a graveyard shift, I got a sudden urge to pee. Like, it was really bad. Painfully bad. I was driving down a quiet parkway with no other cars, so I figured I'd pull to the side real quick and pee in the woods. I put my hazards on, just in case that off chance that a cop rolled by. After I finished, I got back in my truck and tried to start it. Instead, all I heard was the sickening sound of a car battery failing to start the engine. I tried at least five times before I gave up, not wanting to drain the battery anymore. I left my hazards on and stepped outside, so I could be ready to wave someone down in hopes that they had jumper cables. When I did see headlights coming down the road, I went to the side of the road and started waving my arms. The car slowed down and went to pull over to the side behind my truck. As I started walking over to the car, the two front doors opened and two relatively big guys stepped out. I stopped in my tracks and thanked them for stopping, immediately asking if they had jumper cables. They looked at each other, then back at me, and the driver said, nah. The other guy asked, you stuck? I said, yeah, my battery died. The driver said to give him a sec, he'd call one of his boys. I didn't exactly know how I felt about that. Right away, I found the two a little off-putting. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I got gangster kind of vibes from them. The driver got back into his car after he got on the phone. I did the same. When I was sitting in my car, I couldn't help but feel I needed to call for my own help. I didn't know how much I trusted these two. So I called my brother's phone a couple of times before he picked up. It was past midnight after all. I had woken him up with my call, but I told him I was stuck in an emergency and needed his help. I told him to bring jumper cables and to hurry up. He said he'd be over in a few. When I hung up, I got out from the car and waved my arms out to the car behind me. The driver opened his door and stepped out to look at me, and I called over that I had help on the way and it was cool. All he said was, I ate then, and got back in his car. That feeling of danger suddenly exited my body, and I felt at ease. I leaned my seat back so I could relax in the meantime, but soon it came to me that I didn't hear their car pass by. I turned back and saw that their car was still there. It had been almost five minutes since I'd waved them off. I called my brother again, who said he just got in the car. I told him to floor it to me and have some weapons ready, because I was pretty sure I was about to be jumped. He said he had his baseball bat in the back seat as usual. Luckily my truck was only about five minutes from our house, less if he stepped on it. I started to beat myself up for not just holding it in for another five minutes, then this wouldn't have happened. Finally, more headlights appeared coming up the parkway. The approaching car slowed and pulled up behind the car that was behind me. I got out from the car and started waving my arms again, but when I saw two of the car doors open, I had a feeling it wasn't my brother. The driver in the first car got out and greeted his apparent goons. They all started gradually making their way over to my truck as they talked loud and cursed at each other. I guess it's worth noting there were no jumper cables in any of their hands. I'm not a lucky person at all, but when I saw the familiar headlights of my brother's Mustang zooming down the parkway towards us, I felt as if my luck had turned around for once. He pulled up his car in front of my truck and he came out with his baseball bat. He pulled out another baseball bat from the back seat that he brought for me. He tossed it to me and my brother being the larger, more dominant one, said in a very loud, firm voice, we didn't want trouble and it's best they moved along and let us go about our business. They all backed up a little when they saw our bats. One of the guys laughed, another one said, we ain't ever said we want no trouble. Upon examining the first car, I realized the guy who was in the passenger seat originally wasn't there anymore. I whispered to my brother to be wary, one of the men were missing. My brother got back in his car to bring his hood up in front of my hood. He fetched his cables and connected them to my battery. I kept watch of the three men who were lurking by their cars. Now we waited. My brother very softly called my name and then low-key tilted his head in the direction of the woods. I looked into the woods and saw the man who was originally in the passenger seat and was now hiding in the woods, looking as if he was about to do some kind of sneak-up attack. My brother told me to try the ignition. So, with one faithful turn of the key, the engine to my truck started. 
I got back out of the truck to literally guard my brother as he unplugged the cords from my battery and put them back in his car. We whispered to each other our plan, and that was for him to throw it in reverse as soon as we got in our cars, and I'd step on it back onto the road. After closing our hoods, we took one last look at the men huddled by the third car, looking at us. Then we ran for our respective vehicles and stepped on the gas. My brother floored it in reverse. I waited to give him enough space before I floored it as well. As I did, I heard the shattering of my back windshield as a brick landed on my dash. Then I heard the distinct sounds of gunshots, which continued to shatter the remainder of my back windshield. I ducked down as low as I could get while still getting a view of the road. The two of us managed to flee the scene unharmed, and they didn't chase us. We went straight home to tell our 65-year-old dad, who claimed he was 100% sure we just had an encounter with a local gang. Our dad also told us not to take that specific parkway at night because it's not a safe road. I can only guess they wanted to rob me blind, and they didn't take too kindly to us waving bats in their faces. I've done a great deal of camping in my life, mostly solo camping out in the wilderness. Everyone who takes the hobby as seriously as me knows the potential dangers that come along with it. However, there was one thing that happened on a camping trip that I never anticipated. I was in my tent, which sat next to a small flowing river. My campfire was breathing its last breaths, and I was already laying in my sleeping bag trying to sleep. I started to hear something circling around my tent. At first, it started as big, heavy branches snapping in the distance. Then it turned to closer steps on the forest floor surrounding my tent. I ruled it out as being a bear or a larger animal because the footsteps didn't seem heavy enough. Plus, the fire would more often than not draw such animals away. To be safe, I still stayed inside the tent to refrain from making any noise. But the steps just kept circling around my tent. Finally, I called out, Hello? The steps didn't stop. Now I sat up, ready to take a quick look outside. I unzipped the tent and crawled outside. I still heard the footsteps, but now it seemed whatever was making the footsteps was being more cautious about moving around so loudly. I looked out into the darkness of the forest in the direction the steps were coming from, and very briefly, I saw a light. Not just any kind of light, though. It was undeniably a phone screen. It turned off as quickly as it came on. Now I knew there was a person out there circling my campsite. I had already called to them and they didn't respond to me, so that was a very bad sign. Despite my experience in camping and wilderness, I had never been stalked by a human before, and I wasn't comfortable there anymore. I have a license to carry a sidearm, however, and I always bring it with me when I go camping. I felt it was an appropriate time to pull that out from my bag. I started to pack my things as fast as possible. I can't begin to explain how scared I was as I packed up my sleeping bag and tent. I found myself turning around every few seconds to make sure someone wasn't sneaking up on me. Maybe I wouldn't have been so scared if the footsteps around my camp didn't keep going. When everything was packed, I didn't try to hide the fact that I was sprinting back to my car, which wasn't parked far away. I threw my stuff in the back seat and hopped in, locking the door first thing. I turned the car on, and as I put it in drive, the car started to wobble and shake, and I heard a terrible scraping noise. I stopped the car. A low tire pressure alert came on for all four tires, and I knew then that all four tires had been slashed by somebody. I couldn't possibly move that car without destroying my wheels, so I sat there in a pitch black forest with the only light being from my headlights. I was afraid to look outside in any direction, for someone could be hidden, watching from any possible direction. I sat there for a few seconds with my whole body shaking. I finally grabbed my phone to call the police. At the same time, I looked in the rearview mirror, and I saw someone standing at the trunk of my car. My heart was in my stomach at this point. I don't know how I didn't scream. I took a deep breath, grabbed the handgun sitting in the passenger seat, opened the door and stepped out with aggression. I aimed the gun at the person standing at the back of my car who raised his hands in the air. 
I screamed at him as loud and aggressively as I could to get the fuck away from my car. I wasn't bluffing, I was ready to shoot him. He backed away into the woods, and once I couldn't see him anymore, I got back in my car and called the police. I told them to come to the dirt parking area for the particular park I was camping in. They said a state trooper would be en route. I called my towing company in the meantime while waiting for the trooper to arrive, all while my body was still shaking and I was still cautiously checking my surroundings. I never appreciated seeing a police car more than when the trooper pulled into the small dirt lot with his lights on and I finally felt safe to get out from my car. The tow truck came 20 minutes later and my car was towed to a repair shop. I slept in my car overnight and first thing in the morning my tires were replaced. This never stopped me from continuing camping. My old Buick used to have issues with the gas gauge. The gauge was off, so sometimes I'd fill the tank completely and the needle on the gauge would still hover around the E, and sometimes when the tank was running low, the needle would sit around F. The needle seemed to decide when it wanted to work or not. Well, one night after coming back from a vacation and not driving for a week, I guess I had forgotten how long it had been since I'd filled up the tank, because the car ran out of gas on some quiet road in an even quieter town. I didn't want to call my girlfriend because she lived too far away and I didn't want to be a bother. I got out from the car and looked around my surroundings. There was not much except for trees on either side and a small house sitting at top of a hill to the right of my car. So that was my only option to go for help. I went up the hill to the house and rang the bell. It was 9.30 so it wasn't exactly too late to be ringing someone's bell in this kind of scenario. I waited patiently. There were lights on in the house after all. After a minute, I gave the bell one more ring, but I told myself that would be it. After waiting another minute, I accepted defeat and walked away from the door. As I went down the little walkway, I heard a weird noise that seemed to be coming from the side of the house, like the moaning and distressed breathing of someone in pain. It came from behind a line of bushes. Quite frankly, I didn't feel right snooping over there so I continued back down the driveway. I did take a look back at the house, and noticed a light upstairs was on now that wasn't on before, and there was someone standing at the window. I could see their head and shoulders. I stared for a moment, expecting them to do something, like maybe come to the door, but they didn't move, and it got weird. So I continued back to my car. I leaned on my car door and called AAA, which was my roadside assistance company, they said they would deliver gas to me within half an hour. It was too hot out to sit in my car, so I stayed outside. I waited around texting people, checking Instagram, and pacing back and forth. When I heard a deep voice go, excuse me, my head shot up. There was a guy standing by the curb near the driveway to the house. He was wearing a hat really low, and tilted his head down hiding a lot of his face. He asked me if there was a problem. I said I ran out of gas right here. All he said in response was, oh. He turned and started walking back up the hill. Pretty soon he disappeared behind the bushes on his property. He seemed like a very creepy man based on that short interaction. I texted my girlfriend about the whole thing, and she said I should go see what that sound I was hearing behind the bushes was. I kind of wanted to, to be honest. So I snuck through the trees next to the guy's house up the hill and went to the side of the house where I heard the noises. I tiptoed up to the wall of the house, and then stopped to listen. There were the moans and breathing again. They were coming from a window. I went to the window and tried to look inside, but the blind was down so I couldn't. The sounds were concerning though. I lightly tapped on the window and said, Is everything okay? I heard someone say in a faint, weak voice, Help. I stood there thinking about what to do, when all of a sudden the blind kinked open and I saw a face looking back at me through the window. I couldn't tell for sure, but it looked like the creepy man who came outside. The kink in the blind dropped back down shut, and then the window dropped closed so I couldn't hear anything else. I didn't care though. I ran back down to my car, got in, and locked the door. I waited until the AAA truck came, and when they filled my tank, I didn't say a word about what I just witnessed. I just went home and tried to get some sleep that night.
I never wanted to see or think about that house again.